welcome. Um, so first to start that uh, I know that people are anxious and worried and really want to try to make the best decisions um, for themselves and their family and keeping North Carolinians health and safety has always been our top priority. Um, so before we take some questions let me just um, proactively share some comments that I know people have questions about. First, the question of testing, which continues um, to come up. So I just want to proactively be sure you know where we are with testing. Um, and also to make sure that you know that on our DHHS website, we have uh, a dashboard where we're putting up um, before at 11 o'clock every morning um, our most updated numbers of testing. So know you can always go there to get the most updated numbers. Um, so as of this morning, there were 33 confirmed uh, cases in North Carolina in 14 different counties. Our state lab completed 329 tests as of that time, and we now have supplies to test 1,300 people. Now these tests just reflect those that were done at our state public health lab. We do know that commercial and hospital laboratories are testing and expanding their capacity as well. In addition, some of you may have seen that last night, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated their guidance regarding mass, mass gatherings. So we have now updated our recommendations to be consistent with CDC, and that means that we recommend no mass gatherings for more than 50 people for the next eight weeks. For now, our executive order um, that mandates restrictions on mass gatherings will stay at 100 um, for now, and those are enforceable by local law enforcement. However, we're going to continue to reassess where we are, and recommendations may change as we go forward. And with that, unless Director Sprayberry has any other proactive comments? No, thank you, ma'am. All right, then we're happy to take what questions that you may have. I imagine a lot of people have this question, bars and restaurants, a number of states have closed that down uh, what would have to happen before North Carolina took that step I imagine it's been discussed in, in, in at least some detail um, yes sir and we are aware of the actions the other states um, have taken to make sure you all know we do have updated guidance for bars and restaurants on our website and a lot of that guidance is that um, understanding how to do social distancing at bars and restaurants keeping tables six feet apart if people are waiting in line they're more six feet apart um, and so but with that this is a rapidly evolving situation and we'll continue to reassess and if further action is needed then the governor um, has been clear that he will take them just a point of clarification when you're talking about the CDC guidelines for gatherings of over 50 mm -hmm. is that now the standard but then you said 100 going forward I just want to make sure I understand what you yeah mean. so the difference between recommendations so the CDC has recommendations so we're um, encouraging as a recommendation however for now our um, what is in our executive order that is mandated enforceable is 100 got it um, ba back to testing we, we've heard from people who feel like they meet the current guidelines mm -hmm. or they have loved ones who meet the guidelines yeah. and they've struggled to get a test mm -hmm. what, what do you tell those people is it is there a communication issue? Is it all about uh, not enough tests? What would you tell those people? Yeah, and so what we've been working a lot on is um, developing uh, more provider guidance so that our provider community understands how they can um, be able to do those sample collections, how they'll be able to submit to labs that have capacity to do the testing. So we will be um, working, we've been working on that over the weekend step by step to really help our providers who want to be able to do that sample collection um, at their at their offices. And um, then in, in addition, we're working through some of our public-private partnerships to be able to stand up alternative sample collection sites that providers then can um, refer to to be able to expand their capacity for getting that sample collection for patients. Like grocery stores right now, is it a situation at all where some places are getting overwhelmed? Whether it's hotline, whether it's mm -hmm. public health departments, how, how would you characterize for the public? I'm not sure I understood your question about grocery stores. In terms like of people who are showing stores. up, people asking uh, for tests, people, mm -hmm. I mean, from a testing standpoint. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there, I think, obviously, we know there's been a demand for, for testing, and so we're really helping to provide that guidance for their providers to help navigate that um, and to be able to, um, to increase that access to the sample collection and testing for, again, for patients who meet criteria, right? And just to reassess criteria is that fever 
lower respiratory symptoms, um, and flu negative. So we're trying to work um, and, and support our provider community and again stand up alternative sample collection sites to make that easier for people to, to access. Uh, at what point might a curfew or a lockdown go into effect? Yeah, I don't think we are, we're there yet. I think we have some more steps to, to get to before we would, um, before we would get to that step. But continue to reassess and, and changing recommendations as we see. Okay, and another question, if I may, uh, the guidance for people, guidance for people who want to be tested uh, but may not be showing symptoms. So the guidance for being tested is that is for some people with symptoms, right? So fever, lower respiratory symptoms, meaning cough, shortness of breath, and flu negative are the people who um, uh, are recommended for being tested. Is there, good, morning, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. There is, uh, I know that the president spoke with the governors late this morning to continue to talk about this issue. I don't know if you're privy to what was discussed, but is there, um, in your view, does the state still have some needs from the federal government that aren't being met? And if so, what, they, what are they? Uh, so I was not privy to the conversation if the governor spoke to the, to the president. Um, so I'm, I'm not aware of that, of that conversation. Uh, just in general, before yesterday, I mean, was there people mm -hmm. this morning, was there things that the federal that you, that as a state, that, that they've asked the federal government for and they've mm -hmm. either come through or are slow to come through? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been pretty clear that in some of the the parts of the testing that we needed, that had been a barrier. Um, um, but we've been also been getting really great guidance from the, the CDC in terms of, um, again, um, recommendations and guidance. They've been very, um, very helpful um, so from that speaking, standpoint. Last thing, you feel like that the barriers to testing have been alleviated. I think that we're in a better place today than they were yesterday, and tomorrow we'll probably be in a better place than, than we are today. Won't we all be? I yep. hope so. Thank you. <laughs> what specific guidance do you have for fitness facilities, uh, customers who want to go work out yeah. for fitness classes? I know the YMCA of the Triangle just announced they're going to close down tonight for a couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, what do you have for that? Yeah, and so I think we do have a lot of guidance on our website, thinking um, kind of public facing, um, public facing businesses. And again, I think some of those, the, the very similar things would apply to a fitness facility as it would any other public facing. And so again, as much as possible, people being six feet away, making sure that you are wiping down surfaces as much as possible, making sure that people aren't going to that facility if they're sick, if their staff member is sick, making sure that they're not coming into work, making sure they're having flexible um, absentee policies. So the same thing that applies to our other businesses, especially our public facing businesses, would apply to our fitness facilities. Yeah. Could you update us just on the 33 that you mentioned, uh, any hospitalized, uh, any sign of community spread? Are we to the point where anyone's actually been cleared yet? Uh, let's see. So, um, as of this morning, of the people for whom we have the clinical information, um, everybody has had either a contact with somebody or a travel history. So, although we still suspect that there may be some community spread, to date we still don't have documentation um, of that of that community spread. You asked a third question, and I think I don't have the answer to it, but remind me what your third question was. Has anyone was? been cleared? Has anyone hospitalized? Oh, uh, I don't know the answer if anybody's been cleared yet. I'm sorry, I don't have that level of, of, um, of detail. And then we have one person who's been hospitalized. And, and just one point of clarification. So to be clear, at this point, you've got recommendations for bars and restaurants, but you're not asking them to close. That is correct. Okay. Um, can you clarify when and what labs went up and running? I, I, I understood that today, actually, FDA approval came in for UNC to test. I had thought UNC, Duke, and Atrium were already doing that, and maybe it's a matter of they did it, but they also had to resubmit to the CDC. Can, can you say, you know, here are the X number of labs, and here is where they are as far as being up and running for testing? So there's a variety of different commercial and university labs that are coming online in different, um, in different stages. So right now I don't have the, that exact um, list of, of those other um, commercial and university labs. However, we will be um, trying to identify who is, um, who is testing and, and, make, and try to make sure we're having good communication with them. And then it, there was only one additional case added today, positive test. Yeah. Should we read anything into that, or are, I, mean, I think there's something like 260 tests 
submitted but not yet complete. Mm -hmm. uh, so as my epidemiologist said, uh, so at that, uh, so one, I guess that um, we have been expanding testing, so uh, we, we know we're getting more people tested. How to read just that one case in one point of time, I don't want to put too much into it. I think we do still expect that we'll start seeing more and more cases. Um, so I don't know why we want to read too much in just that one increase from yesterday. So will we continue to see the, the trends and see where we are? And then finally, and then I'll sit down. There's been a lot of talk about if you can't go to a restaurant, get takeout. Uh -huh. Is that safer? Well, I think the point of social distancing, right, is that the more that we are not in contact with other people, then the less risk we, are, have, uh, we have of, of getting an infection. So um, <coughs> probably takeout is more safer than, um, than being in public. But we do have those, those guidelines for our restaurants and bars to really have that social distancing, even if people are eating um, in, that, in the establishment. Um, I know you said one person was hospitalized. Just generally, how are the patients doing? And then with the community spread, with the target, uh, Campbell University, what, how many people could possibly were infected there? What has the process been with those two locations? So everybody else is at home, and, um, and um, so not needing hospital care. Uh, I don't know the details of the Campbell one, so I, I can't um, provide details on, on, that, on that question. What about target? Oh, again, I don't have details of, of the where we are in that in that investigation. So. <clears throat> so, can you talk a little bit about the child safety task force that was set up recently yeah. and what they're doing and how they're reaching out? So, you mean the work group to uh, the work? Yeah. So, the work group to address um, nutrition, child care, and learning. Right. So, um, I think over the weekend when the governor. Um, discuss having the K through 12 schools closed. Um, that was a really hard decision, um, and that there's a lot of things to think about. Then, if you're closing schools, one, you want to make sure that children continue to learn. Two, you want to make sure that children have safe places um, to be. Um, and three, uh, that they children have food to eat. And so that work group, which is across DHHS and the um, Department of Public Instruction, is looking into that and tackling and see how we can be sure that our kids are safe, that are fed, and that are learning. So a lot of work is going on um, in thinking through those supports that we can place to families. And another question in a different area. Um, is there anything going on inside the prisons to make sure that if you get a case there, how that will be handled? Yeah, um, when we think about congregate settings, there's several variety of congregate settings. So, uh, same like our long-term care facilities, our adult, our adult care homes, and our, our correction facilities. So, um, we have guidance, making sure they understand again prevention as well as isolation and testing and quarantine. Working closely with our our, our Department of Public Safety. Um, so, we are uh, thinking about our correction facilities, um, same way as congregate settings, and making sure they have the guidance for um, for keeping our, our folks um, safe there as well. And from what you know, have there been any cases, positive cases there? To my knowledge, no. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In terms of the state hotline, do you have any information <clears throat> in regards to the amount of calls you've taken? We've talked to people mm -hmm. who have called, had to leave a message, they still haven't heard yeah. back. Uh, yeah. is, are they overwhelmed? What would you tell those people who are waiting? Yeah, as you can imagine, we've had a very large call volume, and so one of the tasks um, that we're working on is how do we increase the ability to um, to receive those calls to be responsive to the needs of the North Car uh, North Carolina. And so that is something that we're working on. Um, we've had a huge call volume, as you can imagine. So we're working on tackling that. What would be your advice to those people who are calling, still waiting? Uh, I would say that um, to know that we're working, we, we know it, and we're working really, really hard to be responsive to their needs. And, and for everyone, you're, you strike me as a quite calm person. A lot <laughs> of people out there are not so calm right now. Yeah. There, there's some sense of panic, you know, depending. How would you characterize where we are right now? Do you feel good about where we are? Do you, are you concerned? Do you feel like we've got a balance, you know, social distancing with, uh, how would you character? Yeah, I think that's a little bit hard to say, but I think that um, we have had, again, thinking through the stages of an outbreak, right? And so their first stage is 
containment. So making sure we're under, uh, um, you know, identifying people who might be um, with the infection and then the quarantine and the control measures. I think we've been very proactive in North Carolina in our containment strategies. At the same time, as we move into what are called mitigation strategies or community mitigation strategies, we've been very forward thinking in our community, uh, community mitigation strategies, um, thinking through that although we suspect there's community spread, we don't have community spread, and yet we have been very forward thinking in putting into place um, pretty aggressive containment strategies um, under the leadership of, of the governor. Um, and I think that we are, in terms of our preparedness and our working across our sectors, we're in uh, North Carolina is um, in incredibly good shape, I think, in terms of our planning and preparedness. So I think that we as a state are probably in as good of a place as we could be, um, but we'll continue to get um, to get um, better and better. So it's hard to read the future, but I think we've tried to be as proactive as possible um, to protect the health and well-being of North Carolinians. So if you're having a face-to-face -face conversation with one of those within six feet, yeah. obviously, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> right, nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that we should all need to take this seriously. I think you've seen that we take this seriously. I think, though, from an individual standpoint, again, the common sense precautions that individuals can take is what we'll continue to tell um, an individual to do. So, I cannot stress enough: good hand washing, good hand washing, good hand washing. Don't touch your face. Try to stay six feet away from a person. If you are sick stay home um, and cover your, your nose um, and, and mouth. I think the common, what we've learned and looked for other, other countries is that those common sense measures really can make a difference and that is what somebody can, can do to protect themselves. We're coming up on two weeks from the first case being uh, diagnosed. Yeah. Um, so the 14 day quarantine might be expiring tomorrow. Do you know if that person will be released to go back out in the community, family? What's the protocol set up to, to get them back in a normal, normal way of life. Yeah, and again, let's just um, definition, right? So when somebody is sick, they're in isolation. When somebody has contact with someone, you, they're in quarantine to see if they will develop symptoms. The 14-day quarantine is for people who've had an exposure, and you wait for 14 days to see if they'll have symptoms. So that is not the case with somebody who is, uh, was, is sick. With somebody who's sick, um, then there are criteria that need to be made uh, before they're released from isolation. So I'm not sure of the people that have been in isolation if they're meeting those, those criteria to be released from isolation or, um, or not. Um, but once they're released from isolation, and, and I think we've had this conversation, once they're released from I isolation and then um, the risk of being infected or being um, contagious is very low to nothing. So people then, um, we do worry about um, making sure those people are welcomed back um, into our into our communities. We have time for one last question. We understand that you don't know that much, or at least can't tell us that much about the target situation. But there are a yeah. lot of people who are curious about that since it's uh -huh. over in Briar Creek. Do you mm -hmm. anticipate? at some future date, mm -hmm. giving us more details such as where was this person working in the store? Did this person have any contact mm -hmm. with the public? These are questions that a lot of people are asking and they have no idea at this point. Yeah, and so the local investigation that, uh, or the investigation of those specific cases happens at, uh, at the local level with our local health departments. So they would have the details um, um, on those. Um, so that's where, that, uh, we don't have those details of those local um, investigations. 